Hello everyone and welcome to this very exciting and very electric Kia EV6. It's yet another premium EV for the UK market and it promises to be Kia's most high-tech and luxurious model yet. The EV6 is based on the same dedicated electrical vehicle platform as its sister model, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, with both cars benefiting from an impressive 800-volt architecture. That means they're right up there with the likes of Tesla and Polestar when it comes to electrical hardware. What I really want to find out though is whether the Kia EV6 can match up to its more prestigious rivals when it comes round to the all-around electric car package. We know from the e-Nero and the Soul EV that Kia have got experience of creating models outside of conventional petrol and diesel, and the 2018 Stinger showed promise as a halo product. But can the South Korean brand combine these two together? My name's Hope Ellen, and in this Parker's review, I'm going to give you the definitive verdict. Don't forget to subscribe to the Parker's Cars channel and turn your notifications on so you get a reminder every time we publish a new video. Kia EV6s sold in the UK get a chunky 77.4 kilowatt battery pack. However, you can choose between a cheaper single motor rear wheel drive version or a pricier dual motor all wheel drive model. It's worth noting that while the latter is more powerful with 326 horsepower, it does offer a slightly lower range than the cheaper rear wheel drive model. In real terms, that's 314 miles versus 328 miles. Now, if you've been lucky enough to go behind the wheel of a recent Kia model, you will know the interior is well built and everything is logically laid out. But this is a step forward. Now, it might not be up there in terms of overall material quality like Polestar and Audi, but it does have enough design flair and quality to ensure you don't feel shortchanged. Impressive seats ensure you're kept in place whilst providing plenty of support you also feel nicely elevated without feeling too high up. However, over the shoulder view is compromised due to those thick C pillars and the rear window is also a little bit restricted in terms of your view due to that high window line. However, not a problem when you're parking this car because all EV6 models come with rear sensors and reversing camera as standard. At the time of filming, the EV6 is available with three trim levels. There's base level air, GT Line, which is the car we've got here, and GT Line S. A flagship 584 horsepower GT version is also due. All models get a broad spread of standard equipment, including LED headlights, heated front seats and a heated steering wheel, vegan leather seat upholstery, adaptive smart cruise control, a ton of active safety technology, including lane keep assist with driver attention warning and a driver's seat that folds completely flat for impromptu naps whilst charging. It's safe to say these 12.3 dual screens dominate the EV6's cabin, and rightly so, because they control and display all of the car's major functions. The central screen is controlled by touch and is the exact same system as what you would find in the Hyundai Ioniq 5. There's huge amounts of functionality and though maybe it's not as fast or graphically impressive as what you would find in a BMW or Audi system, it does do the job that it needs to do. The digital display replaces the traditional dials and is extremely clear and gives you all the information that's needed. I especially like that when you indicate a view looking backwards shows on the dash to show if it's clear. It's really, really helpful, but you will need to pay for the top spec GT Line S version if you want that feature. Something else that's caught my attention is the haptic feedback that you get from the buttons. Now, rather than bury a lot of the things inside the infotainment system, like a lot of manufacturers do, Kia has come up with this great way of maximizing the physical buttons and dials available. See, for example, I can one minute be controlling the volume, on the radio station. And then with the switch of a button, I can then change to climate control settings, which I think is something that more manufacturers need to do more of. 
When it comes to space in the car, you've got plenty of room for your regular cabin clutter. You've got a lot of room in the central armrest just there. Um, you've also got a large glove box with plenty of room there for yourself. The doors have got generous pockets in there. And this is the coolest thing. This floating central console affords lots of room underneath it and here, which is something that you simply would not get in a petrol or diesel car. The advantage of not having a central tunnel continues in the back of the car. There is plenty of room for three passengers to sit here comfortably without squabbling over foot or knee room because there is so much space in this car. The headroom is a little bit restricted due to the sloping roof line, but that would only be a problem if you're significantly over six foot. I'm just a little five foot three lady. It's not a problem for me. Something else I really like is the ambient lighting that you can see here in the doors and the USB ports that you can see here as well. So you can plug in your phone and charge it on the go or your tablet, whatever. You've also got a free pin charging port there as well. So you can plug in your straighteners, your hairdryer, your laptop if you're doing some work, maybe even take a kettle with you if you fancy. The EV6 is a deceptively large car, yet the boot isn't as capacious as you might imagine, lagging behind the VW ID4 and Skoda Enyaq. Still, with 490 litres of cargo capacity, with the seats in place, it's enough for plenty of luggage. Plus, there's also a small amount of additional underfloor storage. All EV6 models get a front boot or frunk. But this is only really usable on rear-wheel drive versions that don't have to accommodate an extra motor under the bonnet. Now, before we take the EV6 out for a spin, we're going to do a really quick usability test to see how easy it is to operate. So against the clock, I've got to fold down the rear seats so they're flat, tune in the radio to Absolute FM and set the sat-nav to take me to Buckingham Palace. Wish me luck. My, uh, I took a bit of a wide berth there. Um, am I checking it? Right. Um, no handle at the top, so I'm checking the side and boom. Ram, 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 ram. I can't run in these shoes. Now I know where it is. I'm hoping it just does both of them. And it does. They're both flat. Bingo. Into the front. I'm just going to jump in the passenger seat. Very spacious and nice one there. Uh, then I'm going to press on radio. Um, station list. We're on kiss at the moment. We're going to go all the way up to absolute, which is at the top. Boom, I'm out of breath. And then we're going to go to maps to Buckingham Palace of Search. B U C K. Oh, I love how this is laid out. There. Ah, no, Buckingham. Come back, come back, come back. <laughs> Buckingham Palace. Boom. Set as destination. Load, 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 come on. Come on, Kia. Come on. And we're there. It's going to take us one hour and 53 minutes. Right, so I'm out of breath. I'm a little bit stressed, but I'm going to blame the clock because this car is so easy to use. Let's now see how it is on the road. I've been driving the Kia EV6 for a while now, and I'm still so impressed with how smooth and how instant the power is. If you're hopping from a petrol car into the EV6, you're gonna be blown away by how razor sharp the responses and power delivery are. This is only the rear wheel drive version with the single motor, yet it still gives you 229 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque that gets you from zero to 62 miles an hour in just 7.3 seconds, which is plenty fast enough. You can also change the amount of regenerative braking using the paddles behind the wheel, and that includes an option for a single pedal mode. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is very satisfying when you get it right. I'm also a big fan of how accurate the range readout is in the EV6. That's because a lot of electric cars, their range readout will fluctuate quite a lot depending on a few different factors, whereas the EV6 is remaining pretty consistent, which is fantastic for that range anxiety that you might feel. And when you do need to stop for power, the Kia EV6 is really impressive on paper, uh, providing you can find a powerful enough charger, that is. It can go from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. 
Meanwhile, if you're charging at home with, say, a 7 kilowatt charger, it will take around 7 hours and 20 minutes to be fully charged. When it comes to comfort, Kia have deliberately made the suspension in the EV6 a little bit firmer than that in its sister car, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And that's because they want it to feel more sporty and more agile. And there's no doubt that despite its chunky size, it is a really enjoyable car to drive. It's got a lot of grip to the road, plenty of stability, and you really learn to trust it on the corners. On the flip side, it might not feel as smooth a ride as the Hyundai, and that's because it can pick up the harsher bumps in the road. But it always feels controlled. It doesn't feel floaty, which is fantastic if you've got passengers who get car sick. By the way, it's passive suspension only in the EV6 at the moment, but the flagship GT version that's coming in 2022 will have adaptive springs. So if you're looking to purchase an EV6, here are my top three recommendations for which version you should get. If you want the cheapest model, then go for the AirSpec model with rear wheel drive. If you're looking to use the EV6 as your company car, then also go for the AirSpec model with rear wheel drive as that will attract the smallest tax payments. Now, if you're like me, you like a bit of speed and excitement in your life, then wait till 2022. That's when the GT version will be available. It promises 584 horsepower and will get you from zero to 62 miles an hour in just 3.5 seconds, which is fast. The Kia EV6 is a big step forward for the South Korean car maker and one that brings in front of a whole new section of car buyers. It's got the range, technology and charging power to mix it with the best that rivals can offer. Plus, there's little doubt over quality thanks to the standard seven-year warranty. If you're currently in the market for an electric car, there is so much more choice than there was two or three years ago. We know that Kia dipped their toe in early with the Soul EV and the e Nero, but this is their best attempt yet, and it's more than capable of competing with those more premium brands. Were I to pick one for myself, I think the GT Line spec with rear wheel drive is all the electric car you will ever need. And it hits the sweet spot between performance, equipment, range, and value for money. <laughs>